Howdy folks, this is Jim and I'm in my garage studio in Texas. Uh, at the request of a thundering heard of my fan. Uh, why haven't I uh, put any videos up lately? Well, what happened was uh, almost a month ago, I guess about 32 days ago, I had a part replaced. The part was the knee, this here knee right here. It now has a new my knee, one word, in it and to replace the old biological knee that was there. I've mentioned this before about having these left knee problems for a while. Uh, losing weight helped, but right now while I've got good private sector insurance, <laughs> I, de I decided to go and get the knee replaced now. The VA had offered to do it for me for free, but they said I had to wait till I was 70. I'm old, but 70 is still a long way away. So I decided to get my, uh, get, uh, get my uh, part replaced here. Uh, just to sum up my experience, the uh, uh, first couple of weeks were pretty horrible, to be perfectly honest. It was painful. I was on narcotic drugs that shut down my lower intestine tract. We won't go any further there, but that w ruined a whole weekend. <laughs> if your lower intestine shuts down, uh, well, watch the Mythbusters about the cement truck where this little football cylinder quits turning and the cement dries up that's the situation i was in and i wanted the dynamite to blow up the cement in there and that was part of the fun uh, over the last week to 10 days i've gotten a lot more functionality back i go to physical therapy a couple of times a week two or three times a week uh, the recovery for this i didn't really in internalize how long it would be before you actually saw an improvement it's probably going to be a couple more months it'll be uh Probably in best part of a month between the fierce heat wave we're having here is typical in Austin in August It's getting up over 100 every day. I wouldn't ride my bikes much anymore Which is why I did, had the knee replaced when I did in July and August because I don't ride that much anyway Good news is my ninja should be running again here within the next couple of weeks and should be able to ride the ninja Which is a 350 pound motorcycle uh, I'd say after Labor Day once it starts to cool off a little bit. I think I'll be up to riding that Hopefully I'm within a week or two of riding my pedal bicycle. 650 pound FJR with a seven gallon tank, high mounted, uh, is probably gonna be October before I can ride her again safely without risking this knee. Uh, I can walk without a cane or a walker now, that's a good thing. Let me talk a little bit about the, the procedure that my surgeon, Dr. Tyler Goldberg of Texas Orthopedic Bunch or whatever they call themselves, here in Austin uh, did. He used a procedure called my knee. And first of all, let me say I know nothing about medicine. I'm completely ignorant, so this is not medical advice. But I will say the procedure that they used was pretty fascinating uh, from the point of view of an engineer because uh, it used some uh, uh, advanced technologies to create the knee. I, uh, I saw on his Dr. Goldberg's webpage that he used this Miney, one word, Miney.com. You can go there and read about it if you want. But uh, I asked him, did you make uh, parts for this knee in advance? Because they took a CAT scan right before the operation, just a couple of days before the operation. Well, it turns out they did. And let me show you, let me, let me show you uh, what they, uh, the surgeon and his guys uh, did to prepare for this Very operation. Very interesting kind of how interesting. Uh, the surgeon prepared for this operation what he did was, as I mentioned, he took a CAT scan of my knee a couple of days before the operation, and then using this my knee procedure, he shipped the mathematical model created by the CAT scan and actually 3D, three-dimensional printed my knee. This is what my old knee looked like. I, I think it fit together something like that. This is an exact three-dimensional plastic printed image with a some kind of an additive process i.e. you know they didn't mill this out of a chunk of plastic they squirted it with a 3d type printer uh, i am told i don't know how well you can see it but there's all kinds of bumps and ridges on this part here and that's supposedly arthritis and badness there was no muscle or cartilage between these two pieces they were just bone on bone 
and plus there I was bow-legged supposedly I don't know so he first he starts with this uh, model of the the knee he gets a to look at it before he goes in there I guess and then using a, a web-based design program the surgeon makes these three-dimensional fixtures and as soon as I saw this it looked very familiar because my longtime fan will remember that uh, a couple of years ago Tracy aka Bucisaurus Rex came here and he helped me install a uh, new handlebar riser on my FJR motorcycle and as part of the the procedure for doing that I had a fixture that looked a lot like this that the company the handlebar company uh, lent me that clamped onto the motorcycle and acted as a guide because you had to drill out two security bolts to remove the ignition assembly and so to keep the drill straight they gave you this fixture that clamped onto the handlebars so that you wouldn't screw it up and you know have, you know, mar up your handlebars when you drill these two screws out. Well, this is the exact same principle. Uh, the surgeon decides kind of where he wants to cut and where he wants to drill holes and stuff, and he clamps this fixture that he designed on a web design program. He clamps it onto the knee. I mean, he takes your leg apart. Uh, puts this thing on here and there are holes in it that act as guides for where he's going to drill and there's slots in it for where he's going to put his hacksaw in there and so there, there's a couple of these and I don't know exactly I don't know exactly how they fit on which piece I have no idea but basically these uh, three-dimensional fixtures were designed by the surgeon for my knee and so you can take this in there you know and put it on the real knee then he can saw and drill away to his heart's content. In my case, he did tell me it took a little longer than, uh, than he planned because it was more screwed up than he thought. He was the, the two groups of orthopedes who looked at my knee asked me how I stood the pain. I wasn't really in that much pain. I could have gone several more years on this knee, particularly after I lost weight. However, it would fail uh, after I stand for about an hour or if I walk more than about 1.8 miles my knee would lock up and it would become painful so the jury is out now whether hopefully this will help hopefully I'll be able to stand more than an hour I'll be able to walk more than 1.8 miles after a few months of rehab and healing uh, they did cut a bunch of muscles and they do cut you up pretty good also uh, you may have noticed a little bit in the other video let me move the table out of the way I'll show you my fashion statement this is called a Ted hose and I have to wear it everywhere for six weeks for approximately. There, uh, there's a bandage on here. I don't think I really need it anymore. There's one kind of scar where they sliced this knee open. It was stapled. The staples are gone. Uh, it was, and uh, I was lucky there. I so far haven't gotten any signs of any infections or anything. The, the hose is to prevent blood clots. Uh, that's apparently so a big concern they have. Uh, it's for anybody who's considering knee replacement surgery. Uh, be ready for you know some hard times during the recovery I had to take pretty heavy drugs while I was in the hospital I was in the hospital for three days uh, St. David's North uh, Hospital in uh, on, on uh, Palmer and Breaker in Austin if you're interested it's a great hotel they had better Wi-Fi there than any hotel I've ever stayed at and they have room service they have a cafeteria or a little cafe that's about like a, a Denny's or somewhere between a Denny's and an Applebee's great room service I have no idea how much this knee is going to wind up costing me the only price that anybody would ever tell me was that the hospital hotel charge was twelve thousand five hundred dollars a day uh, and that's to stay in this very nice private room I think all the rooms in the hospital are private I think and uh, that's you get the room you get your own bathroom there's you know a button the nurse will come if you push it I think that's what twelve thousand five hundred dollars buys everything else the surgeon, the anesthesiologist, uh, the physical therapists who are in there, the pharmacy, all of that is on top of uh, $12,500 a day. Uh, so this is expensive. I think that between uh, the insurance company and me, this is gonna wind up costing $50,000. So it's not a cheap procedure. I had hallucinations from the anesthetics, the drugs they gave me after the operation. Uh, 
Uh, I never had hallucinations before, even though I was in college in the early 70s, I didn't do drugs, not even one puff of marijuana. Not only did I never inhale, I never even exhaled. <laughs> So I got to see, have a little drug trips. When I'd close my eyes, I'd get wonderful screensavers. At one point, I was or my my hospital bed was orbiting the Earth. Uh, another time, the room filled up with snow. I don't recall my daughter visiting me, but she insists that she did visit me, and I, and I told her that she had a boombox speakers on her shoulder that were like doing this this boom boom thing because her voice seemed very booming at the time. So a few other interesting visual and auditory experiences. I am now, after a month, completely off of all the prescription painkillers. Thank goodness for that. Uh, aspirin and Tylenol are enough to keep the pain under control. There is some pain, not nearly as bad as it was the first couple of weeks when it could be really excruciating at times. So I'm definitely making progress. I got a good physical therapy team that I'd worked with in the past for a neck issue a couple of years ago. Physical therapy isn't always fun, but it's, it's necessary, and I think it's probably the most important part of recovering is to, you've got to straighten that leg out and bend that knee and uh, build your muscles back up. The last thing the uh, doctor told me that I'll pass on is probably good advice for any of you guys out there, especially us macho guys who ride motorcycles. Don't try, I was told, this is what I was told, and it sounds reasonable to me, don't try to macho this, don't try to put mind over manner, don't try to do things that you clearly are not ready to do, like ride your motorcycle, because we've cut muscle, you know, we've screwed, we've sawed, we've hammered. It's gonna take some time for all of that to heal up. And when it heals up, I am told you'll be really glad. And I've talked to people with several people with knee replacement surgery and they were all glad they had it after a few months have gone by. If you, I suspect if you ask anybody who's had this right before, uh, right after the surgery, for like a week after the surgery, when you're, you're walking with a walker and it hurts to stand up and it hurts to sit down and hurts, you can't sleep in a bed. Uh, I've only just now, this last day or two, been able to sleep in a bed. I had to sleep in a recliner because I couldn't take any turning or anything. It hurt pretty bad for a couple of weeks, then it started getting a little better. Here after right at about the 28 day point, I noticed a lot of improvement. Still got to be careful. I can still twist it and hurt myself, but if I'm careful, uh, I can walk without too much discomfort. And I can, uh, and I, I'm just working on getting a normal walking gait back and getting flexibility back into that knee, and I have to wait slowly. In the future, not too many podcasts coming up. Next big podcast probably be when the ninja comes back from the shop, which is supposed to happen around Labor Day. Uh, I'm looking forward to having my little ninja back. I uh, got some uh, mods for that in the pipeline too. Jim in Texas, uh, just telling you a little bit about my new knee. Thank you for watching.